here in Georgia too. It's just a little bit chilly right now. Um, and so Tina, we appreciate you starting your day with us here in Georgia. And um, everyone, Tina will cover how she's going to handle Q&A and things like that. The chat function does work. It's um, similar to Zoom in that regard. And um, but we'll let Tina um, talk about how she's going to manage all of that. So with that, Tina, welcome virtually to Georgia. And we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so I was thinking that I would collect the questions for the end. And, you know, as we're going through this topic, there might be a lot of questions that arise and we could dig into the technical topic as well as just the operational topics. I just want to be here as a resource um, to navigate this uh, cryptocurrency thing. And I'm actually curious from the attendees, if you could drop into the chat and share whether your organization has accepted cryptocurrency, and if not, do you own cryptocurrency? So that will help me kind of tailor the conversation to um, the audience right now. So yeah, just like chime in. Awesome. Okay, yeah, so there might be a lot of questions that arise. So feel free to ask any questions that you have during this um, conversation. I might not get to it until the end. So the topic today is decrypting cryptocurrency. I work in operations as a COO right now at every.org, but previously I studied computer science and did software engineering on a blockchain related project. So hopefully I can bridge both the technical aspects to the real life implications for you and your organization. Um, my goal is that by the end of this webinar, you feel equipped to accept crypto donations or know where to go for more information. Yeah, so it seems like a lot of people um, your organizations do not uh, accept crypto currently, but some people do own it. And yeah, that's, I, I think, like a great place to start with this topic. Um, so the answer is that you'll get out of this webinar. One, why should nonprofits care about crypto? Two, a basic overview of what is cryptocurrency. Three, which nonprofits can benefit from cryptocurrency, and the spoiler is all of them. Um, four, what are the risks and considerations? Um, and this will be more from an operational standpoint. Five, how can your nonprofit receive crypto support easily? Um, and I'll try to keep everything approachable and high level, but please jot down any questions you have during this presentation. Let's just dive right into it. Why should nonprofits care about crypto? So to give you a sense of how massive the wealth accumulation in crypto is, here are some numbers from the top. Um, 12 people on the Forbes billionaire list made a majority of their wealth from crypto, up from four in 2020. And there are around estimated 100,000 Bitcoin millionaires, and Bitcoin is just one of the many cryptocurrencies out there. But to tell you, this isn't limited to just mil wealthy millionaires and billionaires. New data from Gemini survey from of 3,000 investors and crypto curious consumers in the US demonstrates that an increasingly mainstream consumer base is engaging with cryptocurrency and 21 million or 14% of adults in the US own crypto. And Fidelity Charitable, the DAF, found that they're very charitable. Nearly half have donated uh, 1,000 or more to charity in 2020 versus one third of all investors. Um, and there's a growing number of people who are crypto curious. And the majority of these crypto owners uh, tend to lean quite young, uh, greater than 70% are between 25 to 44 years old. And 26% of crypto holders were new in the last year. So how much crypto is donated? Hard numbers are still very difficult to come by, um, but crypto is becoming a popular donation medium. The short of it is that it's becoming more and more relevant and nonprofits that can't accept crypto donations may be losing out on potential support, especially given that donors may be looking to donate their newly found wealth in a tax advantage way. And I'll get into the tax advantages in a short while. Um, and because crypto is kind of similar to stock donations, donating it is a non-taxable event. So that means if a donor 
donates um, crypto, then they don't have to realize the capital gains tax on it. And they may be able to deduct up to the full fair market value of the donation. So it's a very, very advantaged um, asset to donate in terms of taxes. And so a donor may be able to donate more than they had for first um, intended to, or if they were to sell the crypto first and then donate the net proceeds to in cash to a nonprofit, then they will be able to donate less. Um, so in a nutshell, more and more people are donating with crypto every year. And not only are there individuals, but there are a lot of cool projects who want to do with good with crypto too. So let me give you a few examples um, that we've seen on every.org itself. Um, Orca is a Solana DEX and they have embedded into their cryptocurrency design um, that a portion of the transaction fees go toward charity. So their focus is um, on, on climate change and environmental concerns. Um, there was another group, uh, Cogecoin, it's an alt meme coin. I don't know if you heard about Dogecoin, but um, due to the popularity of Dogecoin and other meme coins, a lot of dog related um, cryptocurrencies have spotted up and uh, they tend to donate to animal rights groups. And uh, last but not least, there is Karma Coin, an Ohio based cryptocurrency. And they also have raised over to date, I think $220,000 to charity because they also have it um, kind of embedded into how their cryptocurrency works. So you may be thinking, okay, that sounds great. And there's cool groups that are charitably inclined. Uh, crypto donors tend to be charitably inclined, but my organization has five people and we don't know anything about this and we don't have time to learn about this. Fair enough. And you're not alone. Um, traditionally, it's been just bigger organizations like United Way and Red Cross with huge development teams that can enable crypto donations. And that's because it's been a huge process to set up in the past, both in terms of the technology involved and the internal processes to develop. Now with the good news, you don't need to be technical to benefit from crypto. You also don't need a large development team. In fact, over 1 million plus nonprofits can already accept crypto support with every.org. There are, of course, many different ways of accepting crypto donations and implications of each method, which I will cover shortly. But before diving into all of these details that may feel a bit overwhelming, I just want to say that every.org is a nonprofit for nonprofits, and we build technology to help nonprofits use tech for good. And one of those aspects is crypto. Every.org is completely free for nonprofits to use and similar to a donor advice fund or a DAF. Every.org enables crypto donations for any 501c3 public charity in good standing with the IRS. Um, what this means in practice is that both small and large nonprofits can already benefit from cryptocurrency without doing any extra work. And I'll delve into the details in that in a few slides. So to go back to Karma Coin, um, they are an example of a crypto group that is focusing on smaller organizations. Um, back in April 2020, they started supporting larger crypto enabled organizations like No Kid Hungry or Fred Hutch. You might be familiar with these names because they have revenues of millions to hundreds of millions of dollars. But after they found every.org, they were able to support smaller organizations with much less of revenue, including Working Dogs for Vets, um, they have a revenue of around 300,000 and Joyride Cars, they have a revenue of about uh, 100,000 annually. Um, and this is a quote from their founder, David Butcher. They were previously limited where they could support and they ran into issues with other crypto donation platforms because those organizations are for profits and they have um, strict onboarding requirements. So every.org is an alternative to nonprofits that want to remain high level with cryptocurrency um, or don't want to take on the legal or operational risks themselves. Now, we know a bit about why, crypt why nonprofits might want to care about crypto and which nonprofits can benefit from it. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about what exactly cryptocurrency is. Um, and once again, keep in mind that this will be fairly high level, and please jot down any questions that you want to discuss for the q and 
I think cryptocurrency is best explained in comparison to traditional money or fiat currency. Um, first, let's clear up what is a currency. It is a medium of exchange. It has a unit of account like a dollar and it can store value over a long period of time. Um, cryptocurrency has all of these features similar to a dollar. So on the left, we have fiat money, which is issued by the government. It is governed and regulated by a central bank. And we have uh, when, say, Amy wants to send money to Bob in another state, she has to go to a bank that records a transaction in their ledger and sends it to Bob's bank. And because the banks are trusted by Amy and Bob individually, and the banks trust each other, everyone now agrees that the money is now Bob's. But this process can take generally about three to five business days. And I know that there's, you know, layers on top of it. For instance, ACH can be pretty quickly. Um, but the traditional way is based on this centralized trust. The on the right, we have cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, um, which is essentially digital currency, digital currency that's generated by code. And due to the limited amount or how the cryptocurrency is designed, the scarcity creates value. Um, and essentially, people have to trust in its value to be worth anything. And these days, um, people can use exchanges like Coinbase, Gemini, um, that helps bolster the valuation because you can fairly easily trade a cryptocurrency unit into fiat currency. Um, and those exchanges are now becoming more and more regulated um, by individual governments. But so, so they're kind of careful about which coins to list. So not every cryptocurrency is made equal and not every cryptocurrency can be switched easily into a dollar, but many of the popular ones, um, even meme coins like Dogecoin can be switched to dollars now. And cryptocurrency, um, there's no central issuing authority or regulatory body like the federal bank. Instead, a network of computers maintains the ledger across many, many, many computers. This ledger is uh, typically a blockchain and it records every transaction that ever happened in that currency. So for instance, if Amy wants to send Bob money in cryptocurrency, she would get Bob's wallet, um, public key and address, and then she'll use her private key to send out crypto from her wallet. And this process relies on cryptography, which guarantees mathematically that the transaction is really coming from her. Um, and the way that it it figures out um, consensus across the entire network that this transaction has truly happened and can't be gamed um, are maintained by different types of consensus mechanisms, such as proof of work, proof of stake. I'm not going to get too deep into it, um, but each type has different uh, implications. So. So a lot of uh, things these days, like mining, is based off of proof of work, which essentially has a lot of negatives regarding um, the environmental impact, which you might have heard in the past. But there are other consensus me uh, mechanisms like proof of stake that have lesser environmental impact and hybrid mechanisms. Um, but yeah, I think pretty much for all, all the all purposes currently, the proof of work uh, coins like Bitcoin are the most popular. Um, there are coins like Ethereum that is trying to move away from proof of work to um, proof of stake, which is more environmentally friendly. Um, and so therefore with cryptocurrency, essentially it's a peer-to-peer -peer direct transaction and there is no bank involved. Um, and depending on the coin, it could be filled in seconds uh, to minutes versus the days that is required for banks. Um, yeah, okay. And uh, in terms of the number of cryptocurrencies that exist today, there's thousands and technically anyone can make one. Um, but Bitcoin and Ethereum are the top ones. And the market cap is currently um, totaling $1.94 trillion as of last night, which is a lot of money. Um, and 
throughout 2021, it has sustained above $2 trillion, but it's, um, the market is dipping a bit um, this January. So Now, I want to discuss the risks and considerations related to accepting crypto donations um, and the different methods factor into what sort of risks there are. And as a financial and legal disclaimer, what am I... What I'm about to say and share is for informational purposes only and not intended as legal or financial advice. So please consult a professional like an accountant, attorney, and tax advisor for the latest and most accurate information. All right. Um, so these are on a spectrum of the ways that you could accept cryptocurrency. Um, so to the left is your do-it-yourself option for the super technically savvy organizations that want complete control over their crypto. Um, however, you are left to handle receding, transaction history, um, internal security controls. And if you lose the key to your wallet, you can lose all of your crypto. And in fact, millions of dollars have been lost this way so you have to be very careful if you choose that option um next you have going through say a crypto brokerage um most brokerages they provide custodial wallets um so they actually help you convert the crypto into cash so you don't have to figure out you know how to transfer all of the crypto around um and it's fairly liquid but they're not customized for nonprofits. And then the third option, um, which I think it comes to be like what most nonprofits start using, are intermediary payments processors. Um, they can be nonprofit specialized platforms like the Giving Block or Ngiven, who handle transactions, probably the conversion to cash, and they have auto conversion and receiving. So most of these are built on top of the crypto brokerages and exchanges like Coinbase and Gemini, um, but they just kind of wrap it up in a nonprofit friendly manner. And then last but not least, which I have labeled as least risky because you're taking on none of the legal risks, um, is an intermediary 501c3, like a donor advice fund or every.org. Um, and these take on the risks and considerations that I'm about to share and I'll explain how that wraps up in the last slide. Um, so what do I mean by risk? The number one thing is that cryptocurrency is extremely volatile. Uh, the value of currencies can go dramatically up and down. For example, early, 20, early April 2021, the crypto market value hit uh, 2 trillion for the first time. And then by May, it lost 1 trillion in valuation. Um, and then now it's back. It, I, I think it surged way past 2 trillion uh, for a bit toward the end of 2020. One and then now it's back down to slightly below two trillion. So if you want to accept cryptocurrency directly or hold on to cryptocurrency as an organization, it'll be important to have a policy for when to liquidate your assets. And across the board, I've just heard advice for nonprofits to liquidate immediately unless there's a specific reason why it, it'll serve your charitable mission to hold on to it long term. And if you do hold, different guidelines on when you would liquidate um, depending on the coin and its perceived stability. Um, and this is something that all intermediaries can help out with by converting and auto converting to cash as soon as possible. So most of the Coinbase, Gemini, Every.org and Given, Giving Block, they automatically convert to cash for you upon donation. And then the second thing is that regulators are honestly still trying to decide how to deal with cryptocurrencies. And there are a lot of gray areas um, with the SEC, the different regulators. The IRS does, hasn't changed their FAQ page for virtual currencies in since, I think, 2002. Um, and even then, it's still kind of confusing sometimes uh, which forms to fill out. So just make sure that the experts that you're relying on um, are familiar with the evolving regulations. And even among institutions and brokerages, there are var varying levels of risk tolerance. And one of them is uh, which coins are accepted by your organization. 
So for instance, there's um, privacy coins that might make it really difficult to, um, you know, like practice fiduciary duty um, and there might be a lot of uncertainty. So your nonprofit and board should consider all of these, especially if you're holding onto the currency as an asset or your organization is taking on custody of the cryptocurrency. And just so you know, it's a new era area for um, accountants and things are still not set in stone. Um, the financial board has yet to directly address cryptocurrency in this US gap. Um, general guidance seems to say to treat it as intangible property rather than an investment. But this could seem kind of strange and unintuitive um, because then you won't be able to calculate unrealized gains and values or gains and losses in your books. So just make sure your accountants are very up to date with the general guidance. Um, if an intermediary 501c3 converts the donation into cash and then sends you that, then you would just record it as a cash donation and you don't have to worry about all this. Okay, and um, there are some operational things that you should be aware of if you are taking on cryptocurrency directly. So first, the formal written acknowledgement for tax deduction purposes should have um, language similar to in-kind donations of stocks, quantity, similar receipt language, um, meaning if someone donates five Bitcoin, then you should say five BTC in the receipt, not the dollar amount. And then you would record these in your 990. And you would also need to file form 8282 of, of in-kind donation of assets. And this form is not, let me tell you, it's not uh, meant for cryptocurrency, um, but so far we are required to still file it. Um, and you send this filled out form to the donor according to IRS guidelines, and then sign any 8283 form that a donor may send to you. Um, and note that for crypto donation processors, uh, like the, the for-profit ones um, that are just processing the crypto for you, your organization is receiving crypto directly, therefore you would still be liable for reporting requirements. Um, so you should ask if they help you. Um, if you are using an intermediary 501c3, then you don't have to uh, worry about any of these reporting requirements because you'll just receive a cash grant at the end of the day. Similar to when you get a check from the DAF, um, every.org is similar in that way. And last but not least, um, if you want to accept crypto di directly, uh, re review your policies and make sure that it's very clear, especially in terms of your gift acceptance policy, internal security, and financial controls. Um, because it's extremely difficult to recover cryptocurrency that has been sent out than for cash. Um, so clear language around no refunds um, and, and just other policies uh, you should review before you accept crypto. Now, um, <laughs> this is super cool. Maybe uh, you're thinking that, but there's a lot of risk and considerations as I highlighted. Um, so maybe your organization doesn't have time to dig into it yet. Um, and you don't want one more item that you want to track or manage. Um, there is a way that you could receive crypto support easily. And so I wanna give you a short intro to the nonprofit I'm part of every.org. Um, as a 501c3 nonprofit for nonprofits founded and funded by technologists, Every.org's mission is to build an accessible giving infrastructure to help every person and organization use technology for good. For us, for cryptocurrency, this means making it free so that nonprofits can access it no matter your size or budget. Um, we have a lot of other tools to complement existing fundraising. We don't mean to just like replace all of your fundraising. Maybe a few years out down the line, um, we can, but uh, we also help nonprofits accept appreciated assets like stocks or mutual funds. Um, and if in we launched in March 2020, and we've since helped over uh, 2,500 nonprofits collectively get over $11 million in funding with over uh, 1.5 million currently in active recurring donations. Um, so on the bottom right, and I'll share this slide with uh, these slides with Irene after, and um, hopefully she can send them out. Uh, you could 
see our about page, all the different features that we have available for free for nonprofits and our live public metrics. Um, yeah. And then uh, I want to quickly switch to a demo to show you how easy it is to, to generate your donation button for cryptocurrency. So if you go to every.org slash crypto today, one, you could schedule a demo with us completely free um, to walk through any questions that you may have after this talk. And the second thing is that if you are a registered 501c3 public charity, then you can just go here, click on this create link or button, and you search for your organization by name or EIN. So we have all of the nonprofits from the IRS database. Um, we use the Pub78 um, data. And we have a partner, Network for Good, who also manages Facebook fundraiser donations. You might have received checks from them in the past. Um, so they will uh, send you a check if, if people support you through every.org and you don't have a bank account connected to every.org. Um, and our goal there was to really make sure that this is a tool that nonprofits can benefit from, even if they don't use every.org directly. So as an example, I'll open up Give It Directly, um, but you can search your organization. And that's it. You, in just a few seconds, you could get a Donate Crypto button, um, and you could update the information on this card by becoming an admin. Um, you get some code that you can copy and paste to your website. And if you have a tech person on staff, then you could ask them here. Or if you just want to share the link out via email or social media, then you can just copy and paste this link. And to show you what the donation experience looks like for a donor, um, when they click on this button, they get sent to this uh, donation flow. So this is just a test. So I will cancel out of it at the end. And we use uh, Coinbase in the back end for processing our cryptocurrency. Um, by default, they allow donations of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and USD coin. And they have told us that they will be expanding um, the amount of uh, coins that they support within this checkout flow process. But if you have a large donation of $5,000 or more, we could accept any coin that is listed on the Coinbase exchange or on Uniswap. So the donor can just like click on one of these and then scan this with their wallet app or use this hash address to send the Bitcoin. Um, yes, so then back to the slides. Oh, look at my notes too, just to make sure. Sweet. Um, so I want to quickly highlight how this would work for your organization and how the money moves. So if a donor uh, clicks on this donate crypto button, they get sent to the Coinbase uh, flow. So let's say that they added some Bitcoin. The Bitcoin goes to every.org first. Every.org converts it um, through Coinbase automatically. They charge us a 1% brokerage fee. And then to your nonprofit, it depends on whether you have a bank account added for ACH direct deposit. Um, so if you have, then on a weekly basis or upon request, we, we just send it directly to your bank account. Um, if you haven't, then we send the money first to Network for Good on a monthly basis. And they typically would charge a 2.25% disbursement fee, but um, because we want to make crypto really accessible for nonprofits, we are currently covering that entire 2.25% disbursement fee. Um, if, if there's a large donation, we'll probably reach out to you and ask you if, if you're okay adding a bank account. But um, in a nutshell, the brokerage fees that are charged are 1% of the donation. Um, it's subtracted from the crypto and uh, the disbursement fees is 0%. It's covered. Every.org doesn't charge any fee. So the total fees is 1%. And two, this is my last slide. Um, 
to cover all of those things that I discussed with the risk and consideration. For volatility, every.org sells and converts. Actually, this is automatically um, sells and converts automatically, but for the donations that need to be manually um, managed because they're not one of the three that are listed in Coinbase, then we make sure to try to coordinate with the donor and we convert within one business day. Um, for receipts, regulations, accounting, reporting, your nonprofit never has to uh, touch the crypto. You'll just receive the cash and the crypto donation is first made to every.org, converted, and then granted in cash. This means that every.org is responsible for sending the tax deductible donation receipts, accounting and reporting for these gifts. Um, so yeah, if you wanna use every.org, you could go to every.org slash crypto or schedule a demo. Um, but if you want uh, to maybe learn a bit more about all of the different ways to accept crypto, um, there is a blog post, a three-part blog post post series uh, that covers all of this information more in more depth. So yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I saw some questions trickle in. So I'll just kind of answer from top to bottom. Um, does cryptocurrency stay cryptocurrency or can it convert into dollars? Uh, if you use every.org, it'll be converted into dollars. If you use other platforms like a crypto brokerage or um, some other intermediaries, then there is an option to uh, keep it as cryptocurrency. Um, nonprofits are interested in crypto to make your money, but what can we offer to crypto donors that will appeal to them? Certain wallets, trade in certain coins offer certain social recognition. Um, I think this really depends on the organization sometimes. Um, but it, in general, I would say crypto donors are on Twitter. <laughs> uh, so if there is a social media platform that you want to reach out and try to do a crypto specific campaign, then Twitter might be the place. But you'd be surprised um, at how many people own crypto nowadays. And it's a growing number. So it might be just like in your typical donor base, you just have to say, we have crypto now available and you might see crypto donations come through. Um, and we've seen that this, this is the case for a lot of nonprofits on our platform. They didn't know that they could accept crypto donations on every.org and someone would just go in and contribute crypto because it's an organization they like. And they would come back to us and say, hey, we, it seems like we got a cash grant and we'll be like, yes, you can look at the information here. It was actually a crypto donation. And um, yeah, you'll be surprised at how many people actually own crypto today. And because there are huge tax advantages, I think educating your donors that this option is available is really valuable um, because they might not have known that they can donate crypto in that way. Does every.org receive a percentage of the cryptocurrency that is donated? No. Um, are you familiar with DAOs? Uh, would creating our own coin through the DAO maker allow us to control our donations and keep it safe through the blockchain? I personally am not a expert on the DAOs. Um, so you would probably have to consult your own uh, professionals or crypto uh, guru. But if you have like specific questions, I could ask my my colleague who is very, very deep into the crypto space right now. Um, will the donor be aware of gas fees at the point of donation on every.org? Um, so yes, if they are going through the uh, crypto flow, crypto donation flow through every.org, then they'll be made aware of the transaction, the network transaction fees. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it, it's all kind of wrapped up in the 1% um, for the transaction fees that are related once the money comes in. So the donor will be made aware of gas fees within their own cryptocurrency. So um, what Alex is mentioning is um, every crypto transaction has a fee associated with it. So um, you might actually hear of Ethereum and Bitcoin being quite high in gas prices. So gas is essentially network or transaction fees associated with making a transaction in cryptocurrency. And that gets paid out to all of the people that are keeping up the ledger. Um, so 
it, it, it's not going to the exchanges. It's not going to any of the platforms. It's just a part of being making transactions in cryptocurrency. Um, so hopefully that wasn't too, uh, yeah, too, too confusing to everyone listening in. Um, I think that was all of the questions. Is staking coins an option? Uh, typically not through these donation pl platforms. Nope. Um, Ryan, is it correct that uh, every.org sends donor, donor notice to the donor and then the nonprofit gets donor activity info and can also get a not send a yes. Um, so every.org will send the tax deductible receipt and on our platform, you have the option to customize your thank you receipt, the automated thank you receipt. And then um, if you sign up as an admin, then you can get access to the admin dashboard. Um, you could gain all of the donor information um, if they choose to share information. And then uh, you can then send a non-IRS thank you letter. Um, so just an acknowledgement letter that is not uh, related to tax deductibility. So that was a lot. Um, Irene, do you want to just hop back in and, and Matt be, be part of the combo? Um, people could contribute more questions if they if they want to. Certainly, we still have some time for additional questions. Um, Tina, I want to thank you for taking what can be an overwhelming subject and making it very accessible. Um, so I know you said um, that typical uh, um, crypto donors are on Twitter. Have you seen... Um, nonprofits like start with a um, a social media campaign or a um, an e-newsletter or all of the above to um, alert the world that they are now ready to accept this yeah we've seen um, press releases so we actually have a, a media kit if you if you want an example of a press release um, and we've seen uh, tweets, we've seen email campaigns, um, and then the crypto donations kind of trickle in from there. Um, so yeah, we've, we've seen a variety of things. And honestly, you are the experts for your donor audience. So you meet them where they are. I don't think you should try to completely change and attract um, a complete different set of crypto donors. It usually just takes one person in your donor base who is knowledgeable about crypto to go and share the news to their friends and to their crypto groups. Um, we did see some organizations have a lot of success in in attracting like a specific crypto group, but I think they are still uh, somewhat rare. Um, and then Katha, uh, is there a maximum amount that can that one donor can donate, or is it limited limitless with every dot org? Um, there is no no limit currently, but um, at certain levels, then we would do more KYC to make sure that the, the donation is coming through. Well, we ask people for their name and email address at the very least. Um, and if they are making a donation of over 250000 then there is a separate uh, way to get lower fees. So we can go directly through the Coinbase OTC desk and they charge a fee of 0.1% to 0.2%. Um, so if it's a larger donation, then uh, we prefer that both the nonprofit and the donor coordinates directly with us to make sure that it's maximized as much as possible. Does every dollar get better rates from Coinbase? Um, so we we just have the one percent uh, brokerage fee for using the Coinbase Managed Commerce product, um, and one percent is typically what we're seeing across the industry. Um, pre if if the uh, donation is being facilitated manually, then we can just get like the raw rates um, if we don't use like the checkout experience. But the checkout experience makes it so that the donation is automatically converted, um, which also can help with volatility. So we try our best uh, regarding that. And we've been asking Coinbase to donate a bit more um, to us and reduce the fees, but I'm not sure how that will go. 
Tina, while we're waiting for more questions, could you just refresh everybody on how they can schedule a demo or get in touch with everybody? Yeah. I'll just I'll just paste the link. Uh, and then uh, if you have any questions, and if your donors have any questions, like if you if you have you know board members that that have questions, then you could email us at team at every.org. That's the fastest way to get a response. Um, my email is tina at every.org, but I might be slower in responding than <laughs> mailing the team every.org email. Any more questions from anybody? I know this has been a wealth of information. Yeah, it's I totally... Yeah, uh, luckily it's being recorded. So Irene, I think you were planning on sending it out. Um, I'll send out the slides to you after this call too, so that everyone has it. Um, and yeah, like, thank you honestly for attending and being engaged in cryptocurrency. I know that it's it's very new. And even if your organization doesn't believe in the future of crypto, it is a way that more and more donors are engaging with nonprofits and to make that option available and being willing to dive into such a sort of i guess technical because you could go really deep in crypto um so um you just like organization being willing to create new ways for people to contribute and support your organization is really awesome another question came in tina more on the marketing end um maybe you could elaborate just a little bit on that kit that you talked about that was on your website yeah um, so I think we haven't put it on the website yet. Oh, okay. Um, but, My apologies. Uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be there soon. Um, okay. And suggestions on a good way to roll out a crypto announcement to donors. Um, we've just seen organizations just try it out with like a, a existing campaign or just adding a email um, newsletter just item saying that, hey, this is a new way that you can contribute to us within the new new year, um, using your usual channels, honestly. Um, and it, when you do have an event to connect on, I think that's also a good time. But generally, we've seen uh, use, usual channels um, asynchronous work because uh, you want to reach as many people as possible just to attract the people that are owning cryptocurrency um, and it might be a little bit more education telling them there are huge tax advantages um, and that they should really talk to their tax advisor and mention to them that they're interested in making a charitable contribution in crypto um, that way their tax advisor can optimize their taxes for them um, so so like so many things in nonprofit world, uh, continue to engage with your current donors and you probably would be surprised, as you said, that there are people in your existing donor base or existing stakeholder world who do yeah. own crypto. Yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> um, well, I do want to um, thank everybody again for joining us. We, um, our next TechSoup Georgia event will be on March 8th at noon, and we will um, hear from Mickey Mellon with Green Mellon Media. Uh, Mickey joined us, gosh, it might have been in 2020. I can't remember now. Um, time just all kinds of blends together, right? <laughs> um, but talking about website and um, optimal website um uh, flow and verbiage and all that kind of thing. There's some new regulations about um, accessibility that Mickey will touch on. So I hope that you will join us on March 8th at noon for that opportunity. Um, and it doesn't look like we have any more questions. We're getting lots of thanks. Um, Matt is going to take care of getting the um, recording uploaded to the TechSoup Georgia website, and then I'll send out the information and the slides to everyone who registered um, in um, just a little bit, um, hopefully in a day or two. 
and really want to thank everybody and especially thank Tina. And I saw Eli from TechSoup um, hop on. Um, Eli was the one who connected us with Tina. So big shout out to Eli for his ongoing support of all of the TechSoup chapters across the world, actually. So if we're not hosting something that appeals to you in Georgia, check out um, the chapters across the globe and you might find something else. But please um, send us ideas. We are very interested in meeting the needs of the nonprofit community here in Georgia and would be more than willing to um, chat with you about your priorities and how we can all work together to use technology to further our missions. So thank you, Eli. He dropped it in the chat. And um, with that, Matt, I think we can stop recording and wish everybody a um, one more time a happy new year and a great rest of your Tuesday. Awesome.